I'd like to welcome you to another core business think tank tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on driving sales through email marketing. And the agenda today is going to be why email marketing versus traditional marketing, developing a mailing list, and getting the most out of your email marketing efforts. So let's start with why email marketing versus traditional marketing. And let's talk about the economy. We've got a down economy right now and what the tendency of business owners is when sales get down and the economy gets bad, obviously we want to cut back on anything we don't need to spend money on. But what business owners tend to do is they tend to cut everything. So what happens is less sales equals a cut in marketing equals less sales. So if you're if you're looking at should I market my business or shouldn't I? Absolutely you should. Because the business owners that are cutting their sales are going to continue to drive those sales into the ground and oftentimes they don't survive under those circumstances. Let's look at effective marketing to drive sales. From a cost perspective, email marketing is virtually free. There's no cost of printing. There's virtually no cost of mailing with the exception of whatever email service that you're going to use. The other factor is time. The lead time to get things printed, to design it, actually ran those uh, mailers labeled and stamped and the lead time to get the mail to the prospect or to the customer. Let's look at the same thing with email marketing. With email marketing, the lead time is the time it takes to craft your message. You could get signed up with a company today and you could craft an email and have it out to your customer base today in their hands. So the lead time to get that prepared and distributed is much shorter. Instant distribution from the time you hit send, it's out in, in the mail. Depending on the size of your customer list, it, it may take a few hours, possibly even a few days, but the distribution is instant. You're not looking at a week or so down the road before your customers get it. So the lead time is much shorter. Traceability. Traceability is, is important. We call it analytics. Being able to have tracking on every piece of mail you distribute. If you were to send out a promotion through US Mail, unless you put a return receipt on it, which is cost prohibitive, you're not going to know whether that customer or that prospect ever got it. You're not going to know whether they ever opened it or not. Well, with analytics that you can attach to an email, you can track whether it's been received, been open, whether anybody's clicked on the promotion. And of course, through your sales records, you can identify whether they've purchased or not. So think about that. The trackability or traceability of, a, of an email really increases your sales, increases your closing ratios. The next thing I want to talk to you about is developing a mailing list. And that's critical to doing email marketing just like it is to doing any kind of marketing. You have to have a customer data list that you can distribute promotions to. How do you develop a customer list for emails? And how do you develop a prospect list for email marketing, future customers of yours? Well, let's start with a customer list. One possibility is you already have an existing customer base. At the time of sale, ask them if they'd like to join your mailing list. Some people might, some people might not. Make it valuable for them to join it. And you can do that through promotions and so on. During phone follow-ups with a customer, perhaps you've got a list of customers that purchased things over the last month or two and you'd like to follow up with them. Just check and make sure everything's going well with that product purchase or that service. During that time, again, you can promote your mailing list, joining your customer list. Running promotions such as birthday programs, if you're a restaurant, for example, birthday, anniversary, if you're a flower shop, knowing when somebody's anniversary date is that you sold flowers to this year might be important next year. So if you had a database of people that bought flowers in June, for example, for an anniversary, you could schedule that in the end of June. You could put all those names together and schedule them for a year from now to receive an email promotion to buy flowers. Would that increase your business over time to being able to remind people that your anniversary is coming up, we distributed your product to you last year, here's a discount, come and buy it from us this year rather than them possibly going somewhere else, developing that repeat business. Free giveaways to list participants, so maybe you send out a promotion every month, a discount of some kind, and you can let your customers know that that's going to be the case so that they're more encouraged to sign up. Special discounts to customers, your monthly discounts that you might be able to send out to customers or, or tips, techniques, depending on your industry that might bring value to them being on your mailing list. Developing a prospect list for, for future customers, well that can be done in a number of ways as well. You should have a sign up form on your website for people to join your mailing list. You could also have sign ups at trade shows or business expos. 
perhaps a draw, then you get people to sign up for your mailing list to encourage them. People that you meet at networking events, you know, for example, your local chamber or B&I groups or networking events that you're uh, participating in, get business cards. You know, when somebody gives you their business card, they're giving that to you so that you can contact them, whether you call them by phone or or send them an email, hey, it was great to meet you at the chamber meeting the other day. We'd like to add you to our mailing list. Those type of things to continue to develop that mailing list. Guys, developing the, the mailing list is gold to you. Those people are people that know, like, and trust you, and people that will continue to do business with you if you te treat them correctly. And email marketing is a great way to get in contact with those people and do that. Next thing I want to talk about is getting the most out of your email efforts. And this is important because if done incorrectly, your email marketing campaigns could be a nightmare for you. Doing them correctly, they'll bring value to your business. First thing is to sit down and plan out a strategy that makes sense. In other words, have a game plan as to what you want to do with, with these emails. How are you going to message to your customers? What is that message going to look like? Your branding on your email should look like your branding on your business cards, should look like, like your branding in your magazine advertisements or newspaper advertisements. Everything should look the same so that the impression is continuous. Every time they see your logo, it continues to make an impression on their minds so that they recognize your company. Engage your customers and your prospects. For example, if you're just messaging to them, sending buy, 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 that's going to be a turnoff, and, and they're going to delete you, and they're going to block you from sending them emails, or they'll remove themselves from your mailing list. So engage your customers. This can be done through newsletters, a monthly newsletter on a topic. Maybe you're a restaurant. You're sending a newsletter to your customers every month. Maybe it's a recipe of the month. That newsletter could also include some dinner coupons. Perhaps you're an auto mechanic and you, you send out a, a newsletter once a month, check your belts, check your oil, how to do those things, tips on maintaining your vehicle. Those things tell your customer that you're an expert in the field. It also tells the customer you're very confident about what you do and that you have them in mind. You know, there's a great book out there. It's called Endless Referrals. It's written by Bob Berg. You can look it up on the Internet. It's on Amazon.com. He talks about how customers appreciate you the more you're interested in them. He says that the more interested you are, the more interesting you become. And when somebody knows that you care about them, they're more likely to do business with you. So think about that when you're writing your newsletter. How can I share with my customers that I really care about them? And then within that newsletter, obviously promote your business, run specials, and so on. But in Engage them through that process. Make sure that you're following the can spam laws. They're posted on the FTC website. Here's a direct link. You can type that into your web browser. It'll take you right there. You can print that off. There's some guidelines to sending emails out. Make sure you're following those guidelines. The next thing is to use recognizable subject lines so that your customers recognize them. It's the same every time with a little twist to it. Let me give you an example. For example, if an email came to you that says core news, the core news would stay the same all the time. But the subject, what the catch is or the hook is that's going to be in the message, will follow that. So that each time one of your customers sees the name of your company, for example, and then a topic behind it, the topic can change. But you need to have that recognizable front on that subject line so that they notice it when it comes in and they don't look at that as just some other spam that came in their email box. They know it's from you and there's value in it, so they open. So keep that in mind when you're doing the subject line. Make it recognizable. Subject line should also be between 20 and 50 characters. If you get them longer than that, they often go off the the allowable space in some some email servers and they won't be read. So keep it short, keep it concise, keep it interesting. Make sure when you look at that subject line, ask yourself, this is a good gauge, ask yourself if I got that email with that subject line, would I open it? And be honest with yourself. If you're not really sure, use somebody, your friend, family, neighbor, another business owner, ask them. Would this be an interesting subject line for you? And, and that's a great gauge. Frequency of emails. Decide up front how often you're going to message to your customer. And when it comes to emails, quality is better than quantity. It's all about the quality. In other words, it's much better to do one newsletter a month that's of high quality than try and do one twice a month or even once a week that's of poor quality because people will not read it. The next thing is timing. Timing is everything in so many things. It certainly is that way in email. Let me give you some statistics. For business emails, the best time to send an email to a business owner, the best time for them to receive it, would be Tuesday through Thursday from 9.30 a.m. 
to 3 p.m. The weekends are bad because the business owners aren't there. And if you send an email during the weekends, it's going to get pushed to the bottom of the email box. And oftentimes, it won't even be read. If you do it on Monday, Monday is usually meeting day. It's usually put out fires day, get production back up. So a lot of times, business owners aren't really looking through their emails on Monday. And if they are, they're skimming through them to find important ones. Again, your emails are less likely to get read. In the afternoon, obviously, they're getting ready to go home. So 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., best time to hit business owners with a newsletter or your email. For consumer emails, the best time to send consumer emails is in the evening. Between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., people are getting home from work. They're relaxing in the evenings. That's a good time to send emails. But the best days for sending emails to consumers is going to be Friday through Sunday because a lot of folks wait till the weekends to open their emails. The next thing I want to talk about is deliverability, being able to make sure that those emails actually get out there. Now, most of the email providers, AOL, Google, Gmail, uh, MSN, Yahoo, all these guys have filters to make sure that spam is not getting to their customers. AOL just released a figure the other day that they have exceeded 2.8 billion emails filtered on a daily basis to AOL customers. Crafting your email to make sure that it doesn't get caught in those filters is important. The first thing we can do is get our customers to add us to their address book, whitelisting our emails. The next thing is to avoid certain words. AOL, Yahoo doesn't know whether the email you're sending is being sent with the recipient's permission or not. So if they see in your email there's certain words that they've got in their filters to trap spam, if those words are in your email, they're going to assume it's a spam email and they're going to trap it. Here's a list of words that you should avoid in your email to prevent it from getting caught. If you eliminate these words for your email, use other words, you're less likely to have your emails caught in a spam filter. The next thing is to reduce bounces. That's where an email gets bounced back to you. And there's a couple things you can do to that. Include subscription management links in your emails. For example, if you're doing a newsletter, encourage your recipients, if they've changed email boxes, make sure they update their subscription so it goes to the email that they're going to keep. That'll lower your bounce rate. Use an email service that will automatically remove multiple bounces. For example, iContact. Have a feature where they will automatically remove emails that get bounced back after a certain number of emails. This does it automatically for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Use your phone to update addresses of anyone that's repeatedly bounced. These services also provide you with bounce reports so you can see these people's emails were not delivered, they were returned to me. Well, just like you would on a hard copy mailer you sent through the mail, you'd probably get on the phone and contact those people and try and update their mailing address. Do the same thing with your email address and that will allow those emails to go to the correct email address instead of being bounced back to you, which does absolutely no good. The next thing is to remove any email addresses that include abuse, or postmaster from your email list. Oftentimes these are traps that are put out there and they could potentially get you on a blacklist with somebody like AOL or Gmail to where you wouldn't even be able to send emails to any of their customers. Email marketing can be an extremely effective way to message to your customers, increase sales. If you'd like to learn more about email marketing, go to our website corebizsystems.com and sign up for our free webinar. And while you're there, take a look at our DreamQuest business workshops for business owners to help them run their businesses more effectively. I hope today's tutorial was helpful to you. We wish you the best of success.